gearing up right now in the short run for a massive Black Friday. We're trying to get our first six-figure month, which would be absolutely insane. I was hoping to start off by talking a little bit about your journey as like an entrepreneur, how you ended up in Texas. Can you talk a little bit about how you like traveled from Boston to Texas, how you ended up there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and, you know, I, I kind of, I knew that was my end goal ever since high school. I'm like, was obsessed with Gary V and would go to, I went to a Gary V conference and I was all about entrepreneurship. Um, and so I just knew that one, like I need to start creating content. That was like one thing I knew. And then two, like I knew that the business degree I was pursuing, like wasn't going to be my end goal. And so throughout college and end of high school, I was posting fitness content, but even in the back of my head, I didn't want to be a fitness influencer. I was more, uh, guys like Max Tuning, uh, Christian Guzman, those guys that have businesses in the fitness industry, I was more obsessed with that. And so I just kind of chased that path a bit and it came to like my junior year where I didn't know what I was doing. I was going to go down, maybe go into finance and go down that route. But I, I was like, fuck that. I need to figure out what I want to do entrepreneurial wise. And I knew that I, I knew like how to create content. So I was just running around to local businesses in the Boston area, helping them with content. So I basically had like a little social media marketing agency locally that I just had clients doing. I was doing everything from real estate drone photography to managing social media pages to video editing, like whatever I could do, I would just hustling. And that worked pretty well. Like I, I made a good, decent amount of money, but it wasn't scalable. It wasn't like a real business. I was basically just, just this freelancer running around. And so I knew that like the, all the guys I looked up to in the fitness space had big e-com stores and e-com was the place to be. So I wanted to learn skill sets within e-com that I could sell. So I started learning Facebook ads, started learning about email marketing, started learning about funnels and all that stuff. And I went off and was just like, all right, I'm going to create an e-commerce agency and help try to find some fitness brands to work with. And um, Cannon Raider, who's the founder of Yo Club, who I'm now partnered with, he was, um, yeah, he, his brand blew up on, on TikTok. And I don't know, at the time... I. I, I, I thought it was a little bit, cr not cringe, but it was like, it was just a funny brand. They're like, we're the new Gymshark, and Gymshark's <laughs> over, you know, we're Yo Club, and they posted content like that, but I knew Cannon was a hustler, and he followed me on, I don't know, he, he followed me on TikTok or whatever, we got connected, and I slid him the DMs, like, hey man, like, you know, I, I'm starting this e-com agency, doing Facebook ads, like, would love to help you out, got a few calls with him, he was my first e-com client, and from there, like, I was running Facebook ads for Yo Club, and... One thing led to another. He's based down here in Dallas. Um, he started out other brands. He rebranded Yo Club to Doggy Sportswear with a new partner. And so it came to the point where it's my senior year. And I was like, you know what? I, I can't be, if I really want to grow and really want to kind of jump off the deep end and learn how to swim, I have to be down there with these guys. And, you know, I, I started a bigger and better agency with those guys and also Vision Nutrition, which I'm sure we'll get into. So I got actually went into business with this client and had more ventures. So I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna move down to Texas. And you know, it's a good, a lot of like-minded guys down here. And you know, I went to school in Boston. My whole probably, you know, I went to, uh, you know, grew up in, grew up in South Shore of Massachusetts. Then went to high school at Boston College High School. Then went to school at Bentley. So that's all like within like a 40 minute radius. So I was like, I need a branch out because I never had that experience. You know, a lot of people in college use that experience to go live somewhere new. I didn't do that. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm 22. I have nothing to, nothing to risk. So I'll just go down here for a bit. I wanted to ask you about college a little bit. Uh, is it worth it? So I had a, I had a TikTok. So like we have a, we have a podcast, like a little podcast. And one of the clips went like semi viral, but did really well is what I would do if I was to, if, if my end goal was to be an entrepreneur, what I would do before. And I think that unless you have a hundred percent clear, like you're 18, you know that you have a business you want to start. I think it's good to go to college, but with the, with kind of like the idea, like I would avoid debt at all costs. So the mistake that I made was, you know, I have like 50, something like 40, 30, 50, some, I don't know what it's at right now, probably around 30 or 40 G's of college debt. Right. And so I'm transparent about that because like a lot of people either, I think a lot of people, they just kind of, their parents just say like, go to the best college, you know, take on the debt, you'll pay it off uh, eventually. But if I were to do it again, I'd probably go to 
um, either a lower, like a less, I don't, know, I don't know, a school that gave me more money, maybe a state school, something like that, and then figure it out there. And, you know, you have that time to figure out what you actually want to do. So maybe try some things like, I know for a fact that at 18, I wasn't ready to be an entrepreneur. So that time was helpful. I don't really think the curriculum or the actual academic rigor really attribute to where I am right now. But you know, you, you have that, like a, you're living in a dorm room, you're living on your own, it's a good opportunity to try things. Um, so you can get a business off the ground for your dorm room. And the big thing is just like, try not to have a lot of debt. Um, I don't think, I think it's a, it's a bit of a, I don't go as hard as saying like, it's a scam, you don't have to do it because there's some people that should do it, but there's a lot of people that's not a good, good fit for. And I'd say that uh, overall, you know, the culture, I think the issue is that the culture makes it seem like college is the, everyone has to go to college. It's key to be successful. You have those limiting beliefs growing up that like you see a guy working at a gas station. You're like, oh, he didn't go to college. Like that's where you're going to end up. Like all this stupid shit. That's just not the case anymore. So I guess it's kind of removing that stigma and then realizing like, you know, it's not a lot. I, I just kind of hate the culture of like shitting on college completely. Like entrepreneurs saying like college is a scam because like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't go as far as that. I think you can play the game a little bit, maybe live in that dorm life for a bit, scale your business, figure things out and then be in a good spot. So it takes a certain type of person to succeed without going to college. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And, and I know that like if my mentality too is like if I didn't go to college and I was, you know, living at my parents' house, like that, that for me wouldn't really attribute to growth. Like I kind of needed to experience some growth. So, I mean, for some people, right, if you don't go to college, like maybe you get a full-time job and you literally move out and you grind. I know like a few of my buddies from high school did that and they started some businesses on the side. Um, but I mean, my thing is like with college, like I think Gary Vee says it like this, like it, it, it can be like a four year vacation if you want it to be like, it's, it's, you know, you can, you can do the bare minimum in class and then focus on, you know, you have all this time to focus on your business. So, you know, if you, if you have that opportunity, if you're able to, you know, have that, then, you know, you might as well do that. And, and remind me, you, do you do uh, you did associates, right? Yep. So I graduated with my associate's degree in business and I'm taking a gap year yeah. right now. Um, I'm, nice. I'm working for an accountant downtown Amesbury right next to Hard Knocks actually. So I'm kind of getting yep. um, real world experience in the business and accounting realm without having to yep. pay for a degree in accounting, which I feel like is going to get me yeah. better experience anyway. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's, that's a good, that's a, that's a great point right there. Right. I think, um, if I was to do it again is get like some sort of mentor work for free. Like if you're, if you're wanting to be, you know, whatever you want to do, even if you want to get a job or whatever, and you're doubting college, I think that like apprenticeships type vibe is like so much more valuable, kind of like what you're doing. So, you know, if, uh, if, if I was like 18, 19 and I was to do it again, maybe, maybe I'd be like reaching out to like as many entrepreneurs, e-commerce entrepreneurs or marketing entrepreneurs and just try to like, work for them for free to get a little bit of experience and then maybe, you know, later branch off. I mean, there's so many ways of doing it, right? Like, you know, you don't need to drop out of college to be a successful entrepreneur. You don't need to not go to college. To be a, everyone's on their own path. And to say that like one path is better than another, it's just, it's every, everyone's on their own path. That's what I realized. So, you know, it's just, it's just staying to the goal. If you have that goal of being an entrepreneur, like make it happen no matter what your circumstances are and just keep taking those, those steps towards it. And even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to do whatever, you know, co college isn't isn't necessarily the the end all be all of, of success. Clearly, so right. I know you got your um, bachelor's in finance, right? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. How much of that degree do you find yourself using in your own companies? Not much. Not much at all. I'd say honestly, like it's funny, like like bookkeeping and finance is probably a weakness of mine, which is interesting, Ma mainly because I. I know how to do it. I know I understand finance, but I don't like a lot of my brain power and like focus is so much on like other stuff that like that honestly like takes a back seat. So that's been like honestly a weakness of ours recently. Um, but I think the only thing that I really use my degree for is like an understanding of the markets and I can understand the economy more and like stupid shit like that. Like it's, it's not, it doesn't attribute to you know, direct success in the agency, e-commerce, marketing world. Um, but I would say like, I think that a little bit of a leg up, like maybe some things that um, I took away from college is kind of like that professionalism and that 
be able, being able to communicate and like some things that maybe just like getting some reps in college like helped me become better um, as a business person now but I mean you can learn all those skills on your own and with the internet you can learn so much on your own that you know sixty thousand dollar a year uh, you know uh, degree necessarily isn't the best way to do it so not that much um so you're currently you are ceo of the visionary group and co-founder of vision nutrition yeah i mean yeah i kind of i kind of uh that the title ceo i don't really use ceo it seems, it's such a hard oh hard dude i, I love it i'll give it, I'll give it to you i'll give it to you no no but yeah um i mean technically yeah and then yeah co-founder of uh vision which is uh the supplement company yeah can you go into a little bit about what your current goals are for each of those companies yeah, um, so for the Visionary Group, I, I really want it to be um, the go-to agency for fitness e-commerce and also beyond other e-commerce brands as well. We definitely have a leg up in the fitness space. Um, so I'm trying to position it to be, um, you know, if you have an e-commerce brand, you're coming to us for paid ads, you're coming to us for TikTok, you're coming to us for all those kind of operational stuff that a lot of, uh, you know, brands struggle with. Um, and so... Yeah, I think in the I, I think we can get to in the next year ish. Uh, yeah, definitely next year. I really wanted to get to like a million dollar agency. We had certainly had a lot of bumps in the road, and over the last few months we we've kind of gone through gone through hell a bit. But I know that you know the trajectory we're on. I think the Visionary Group can be you know a cash flowing business, and that's really the goal of the agency is you know service based business. Um, so it's profitable day one essentially. So there's a lot of room for just like growth there and being able to scale a team and have, be, be the real experts there. So um, the Visionary Group is awesome. It's a good cash flowing business. Um, Vision Nutrition, on the other hand, it's, it's, it's an e-com brand. So different game, um, holding inventory. So I think that a lot of, uh, of supplement brands right now are um, kind of doing the same old type of stuff. I mean, the, the ones that are flourishing and winning are the ones that are kind of wild with their marketing. Um, wild with the content they create. So I think the winners right now are Rise, BPN, and Ghost are probably like my eyes, the top brands in the supplement game right now, um, just because they're so different. And so you see a lot of brands try to do the same thing of kind of get like these very jack guys to do their marketing. And it's like very standard. Every, every protein kind of looks the same. With Vision, our goal is to be very loud, very out there. And very community based and, and have that mission of, you know, uh, if you, you know, if you have a vision, chase that vision. And that's really what the motto is and what it's all about is really pursuing that vision that you have. And, um, yeah, I really want that brand to be, I mean, we're gearing up right now in the short run for a massive black Friday. We're trying to get our first six figure month, which would be absolutely insane. Um, and then beyond that, I think it's just like, a. it's, it's really like a good learning experience. I'm able to test a lot of like marketing strategies, things like that on the brand. So I kind of have a sandbox to work with. Um, and so my goal is really to scale that, make it an awesome community. I have awesome partners on it that are amazing at what they do. And who knows, maybe five to 10 years down the line, sell it or exit it. Um, that's really my, my goal with, with that. Awesome. You got, you said you're a supplement company. Are you guys strictly pre-workout or are you looking to expand to other supplements as well? Yeah. So we have, um, actually next week we'll, we're pretty much we're gonna have pretty much a full of solid line. So um, we have, right now we have the Dial Pre-Workout, which was our first product that we came out with. And then we got Forbidden for Pre-Workout, which was a high stem pre. And then uh, Pump Potion, we launched a little under a month ago. That's a non stem pump formula. And then next week we're announcing two new products, which is our whey protein and um, pump caps. Um, so like little pills that you can take for to get a pump. And then heading into 2023, we'll have, um, we're thinking about definitely creatine, some nootropics and really expanding the line. So um, we kind of start with one, the thing about us and the way that we do business is we don't, like you'd be surprised how little we put into it and we kind of just need it to cash flow and uh, bootstrap it. So, you know, we have six owners on it. We each put in a little bit of money and then that bought the inventory. Then that, you know, all profit goes to the next batch of inventory and we're just kind of growing it that way. So. Um, as we grow and if we keep having the success that we're having, we're adding more products to the lineup and, uh, you know, I, I want it to be 
full one stop shop. Get all your all your stops at, at Vision eventually. So I'm curious because I didn't hear um, Gorilla in your top three for pre workout. Where does Gorilla stand yeah. for you in that realm? Um, I think Gorilla uh, Gorilla had like a very good. Um, they had some hype for a while. I just feel like with their marketing and and I don't know they don't stand out as much to me um, as they used to. I think they have like some very solid athletes that push the product. But when it comes to like mass market um, adoption or even heading into the retail game, you know, you can't fully rely on, you know, those top athletes. You know, if you're, you know, there's, there's such a bigger, the fitness industry, the fitness industry and that fitness community that you see online that you probably know and like and follow, that's such a small part of the big scheme of things. There's more and more people are jumping on supplements. Supplement industry is booming. And you see like, you know, the guys that we're really trying to target that you can bring value and probably there's more um, market share of are those individuals that maybe they're just getting into the gym. Maybe it's the 30 year old who's told by their doctor that, you know, they have to lose weight, you know, and, and they're now looking for a self and company to help them in the gym. They're not necessarily following, you know, those big time influencers. They're looking for brands that, you know, can provide them value, help them and, and think that serve them maybe in the supplement shop that they go to. So, you know, I think, I think Gorilla does great at the market it does. I think, I think the products are pretty solid. I, I've, I think I've only had it. I think the only time I actually had Gorilla was at Hard Knocks. James gave me a scoop of Gorilla. Okay. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, I think that for, just from a branding marketing standpoint, I think that the brands like BPN, Ghost, and uh, Rise just have so much more longevity and are doing things right. Because they're trying to go like mass market, retail. That's where you can kind of get into the, you know, hundreds of million dollar, uh, you know, sub brand right. valuations and stuff like that. Okay, so, so Gorilla is more yeah. of a niche, niche brand. Yeah, it's very, it's very niche. It's not to say that they can't break out, but I think I don't even know. Do they have protein? Like, I feel like they're. Yeah, they st- they just have like one flavor, I think. Yeah, so I think it's limited. I think it's I think it's solid. I mean, Derek pumps it from his own personal brand. Like, it's probably they probably want it. To, I don't I don't know. I'm talking out my ass right now, but they probably want it to stay niche and stay part of that community and just like pump that community, own that community. Um, because there's pros and cons of kind of going, branching out and trying to please everyone. You know, there is definitely benefits of staying niche and staying targeted on that market. So He has a very yeah. loyal fan base right now, I think. So I don't exactly. even know if he would benefit that much from trying to expand. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's so many ways of doing it. The big thing for me about Gorilla, um, Derek was kind of the first one to have pre-workout that didn't include beta alanine in it which at first mm. I wasn't, I was kind of skeptical, but then I started yeah. to kind of realize the effects that beta alanine was actually having on me. And it really just made me feel itchy. And like, I was not a yeah. fan of that feeling. And at first I would go to the gym and me and my buddy would just pound like pre-workouts filled with beta alanine. And we would feel so itchy like everywhere and be like, Oh my God, I'm feeling it. Yeah. Like I'm itchy everywhere. It feels like it's hidden. It's hidden. But uh, right. once you try Gorilla and it doesn't have beta alanine in it, you kind of feel, you kind of realize that that wasn't really having any performance enhancing benefits. And the only thing right. that you it's really like noticed from placebo. it was feeling itchy, right? Yeah, yeah it's placebo a lot yeah, of times. Yeah. So what's, is that, yeah. what's your opinion on beta alanine? Do you kind of feel the same way? No, so it's funny. Yeah, I mean, um, I think though, there definitely is um, performance benefits to it, but you have to like, it's like creatine. Like you literally have to be taking it like every day for a long amount of time for it to uh, work if I'm not the granted I'm not like the formula guy on our team but I, from my, my understanding um, but it, it does help with um, I think you like muscle endurance so maybe you're able to get an extra rep in and stuff but again it's like that 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 feeling is like I think it's it's awesome from like a consumer standpoint because when you take something you want to feel something like that and so beta alanine kind of has that trigger where you feel that that itchiness like dialed we do the same thing we uh we don't have beta alanine in it. i actually didn't even know gorilla was the first where they they did that um our goal was to have like a very good stem decent pump and then like a high nootropic formula it was kind of our differentiator um in the, in the on the product um, side but um what we what we want to do we're actually gonna i think in december too release just like beta alanine on its own so like you could stack if you wanted like dialed with beta alanine, because some people do like that itchiness, they can stack it. So, um, yeah, I I think it's an interesting play, and I, I think too that is a little bit placebo just to feel it. 
Yep. Same thing with creatine. I, I see newbies coming into the gym all the time. Like, creatine test boosters, they'll tell you, like, oh, dude, I just did a cycle of a test booster for, like, two weeks, and I'm, I gained, like, five pounds of muscle. And it's like, all right, it's all placebo, you know? None of that matters if you're not taking care of, like, your diet, your sleep, and all that stuff. Like, you can try to take those, like, quick supplements and, you know, try to fix those issues, but, like, you're better off, you know, focusing on your diet, focusing on your sleep, focusing on your actual lifting than, you know, the, the creatine or test booster or fat burn or whatever bullshit that's out there. Um, supplements, like, are, are not, they're not necessary at all. Like, they're just not necessary at all. They're, they're just, like, that 1% boost. I think, I, I mean, pre-workout, I love it. I love caffeine. It makes you feel good. And then, obviously, protein helps on a regular basis to get the, get the macros in. But, yeah, the, those little things are kind of small in the big scheme of things if you if you're not like i remember in high school like i'd sleep like four hours four hours a night like shitty diet then just slam pre-workout and try to you know try to expect great results from that and that's that's just not how how it works isn't that crazy though because i feel like back in high school like it worked just because you were like so new to the <laughs> gym and now it's like yeah. if i get any less than eight hours of sleep i'm just a zombie the next day and i would know that yeah. i'm gonna have a terrible workout no matter what yeah i mean absolutely yeah i think you know when you're young and in your teens or whatever you uh you got the newbie gains going for you so you can lift whatever and you'll start to see progress and then yeah once you get up i mean yeah like you're fucking jacked you know like you you can't like a year from now like to get like you know it's kind of like the law of diminishing returns like you'll get a ton of ton of progress you probably had a crazy transformation now to get like that little bit better it's like as much work if not more work to keep pouring into it that's what i've experienced too like Man, like I, 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 I got super. My my goal was strength for a while. I all I did was strength, and I was trying to just lift the heaviest. And then, you know, I now I kind of just train for to complement my lifestyle. So whatever season I'm in, you know, training is just a way to de-stress myself and get my mind off things. So my goals are so much different than you know, like the the teenage me who's like that kind of gym shark degenerate fanboy who just wanted to lift heavy weights and do whatever i knew that you were into powerlifting for a while that was kind of your thing but i see that you're now uh training for a marathon can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to get into marathon running yeah so funny story about that so i'm actually pulling out of the marathon unfortunately. No. so i did yeah i mean i did uh so last year i did the half marathon and it was i found it to be really easy and so this year i was like fuck it let's do the let's do the full and then my partners ken and zach they now want, they want to do this crazy challenge, which I personally don't want to do, but I think if I'm on the sidelines watching them do it, I'm going to be pissed. I'm like competitive and I want to do this with them too, is they want to do this trifecta challenge and they think it's going to help blow up all the brands and the content. So it's a powerlifting competition, a bodybuilding competition and a marathon all done within a year, all done in 2023. So that now I'm like, fuck, and now I'm eating a lot now i'm like back to strength training i'm trying to get my strength back to go compete in a powerlifting competition in february or march and then seeing it i don't know how much muscle i can put on i'm gonna play it case by case basis i'm like maybe debate about about shredding and stepping on stage i fucking do not want to do that at all uh that's like my worst fear uh um, why is that your worst fear i don't know i don't want to be posing on stage and i don't know i'm not about that but I, don't, I might do it. I, I might do it. I think I should. I'm going to try to like force myself to do it. Um, Abby, who's like a, she's a legit competitor. She thinks it's like the dumbest idea ever. She's like, you need to spend a month to put on muscle and bulk or spend a year, whole year to do a growth phase. Cause I, I've been running and doing so much endurance that, I mean, even I was looking back to my, like when I was like 19, 20, I was definitely like chubbier, but like I had a little bit more size. And like if I did a more strict cut, then I don't know, maybe I'd have more muscle mass than I do now, but um, so yeah, and then that's the trifecta. And then like, if we do that, if we have the momentum on social, if we document it right and do it right, like we'll, we'll throw on a iron, I guess 70.3 Ironman, like 2024. So I don't fucking know, but I just want to compete with them. So we'll see. So you pulled out of the marathon because you wanted to focus on putting size back on. Yeah. And, and I got like, I got super sick the last few weeks and my training kind of went out the door and I, I, I started prep, like literally I had 90 day marathon prep which is pretty short in the big scheme of things so that two weeks being like not able to run kind of set me back so i was like you know what i'm not going to force this and i literally saw uh, a few guys i follow on tiktok and some of my friends they they ran the new york city marathon these guys were fucking 
elite runners, like great runners, that's what they do. And they were like failing, like they had to pull out of the marathon on race day. And like my friends and family are like, oh, you just do it and like get like a, do it in five hours, whatever. I'm like, I don't want to do it in five hours. Like I want to be like dialed in, actually do it, you know, actually have a goal and like do it right, not just do it to complete it. So I felt like if I were to continue with the prep, I would be just kind of like doing it to complete it. And I don't want like a five hour marathon and run, run 12 minute miles, 10 minute miles. Like I want to crush it and get like, a good time so yeah if you're gonna do it do it 100 percent. i love that exactly if yeah, uh exactly. if nothing else i had one of your training videos pop up on my for you page and it was oh, yeah. the yeah it was the one where you ran by the office buildings and then the graveyard oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it reminded me of uh an experience that i had a couple years ago with uh one of my friends will uh we were driving in a car and we drove past a graveyard and he just pointed to it and he goes that's where we're going. And I was like, damn, like he's, he's not like a, like a philosophical thinker. And he was just saying it as like a joke, but I took it as like, oh my God, like that's actually like we're like where we're going to end up. And, uh, I don't know, just that video reminded me of that experience that I had and something about the, uh, the fact that this adventure that we're on is temporary is probably the single most motivating factor in my life and i from watching your content i kind of think that you feel a similar way about that yeah i mean there's a lot of i mean it's interesting there's a lot of perspectives on it um you know it it, it can get spiritual it can get deep but i think that you know i think i i kind of look at i look at life like a video game a bit like you kind of have this opportunity to you know explore experience as much as possible you know bring value to as many possible help as many people as possible and you know, you just want to squeeze every, every bit of juice out of that experience. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think life, like even like through like difficult times, hard times, like the human experience is just one of the most kind of interesting and, and fascinating things that there is. And, you know, yeah, I, I literally like reflect, that was like a, a genuine thing. Like I, I, when I was doing my runs, I'd like always like reflect. Cause I always get to this like meditation, spiritual mode when I'm running. It's very, uh, it's not like I, some people might call it runner's high, but whatever. It's just like very like, kind of just like you're floating if you're if you're feeling good and I'd always like reflect about that and I think that you know I think like there's some people like Alex Ramosi who's a big entrepreneur right now puts out content like he's very he's very like uh nihilistic and kind of negative about it he's like oh like no matter what I, I have all the wealth in the world but you know in, in five generations no one will know me um but I think like you know you can you can you can last if you can just live your life, bring value to others and leave a lasting legacy. That's, that's the dream. That's the goal. And, uh, yeah, man, I think, uh, connecting and like you said, recognizing that you're going to die is the best way to get some motivational inspiration in you. The fact that you brought up Alex Formosi saying that I watched that podcast a few months ago and that kind of changed my life. Like his view, I never really heard anybody talk about nihilism in that way, especially in his position where he has like, you know, all the money in the world. And he's talking about how, nobody's going to remember you five generations from now. I mean, can you remember your great, great, great grandfather's name? Like probably not. You don't know like anything about him. And just that kind of viewpoint changed everything for me. Like it's a, like, like you said, I do feel like there is some value in leaving a legacy and that's a good like motivating factor. But at the same time, if you zoom out on the scale of space and time far enough, I kind of feel like, none of it really matters in a way like in a yeah. nihilistic way not that it has to be a negative like there's optimistic nihilism is a is a opinion but yeah i don't know what's what's your opinion on on <laughs> meaning do we make our own meaning or is there no meaning i think i think we make i think we make our own meaning i i i struggle i struggle with this a lot i've actually i've gone through a phase where recently I, i've been getting like really religious, which I, I haven't, I, I went to Catholic all boys school and like was kind of like kind of turned off from it, from that a little bit. Uh, but now I'm kind of leaning more into Christianity a little bit. So that kind of influence is my opinion. But I think that, you know, with Alex, he kind of misses, yes, still a hundred percent when you zoom out, you know, there's no meaning, but I don't know. I like to think that with this digital age, that there's some preservation of like, you know, some memories that even like five generations from now, you can kind of see, I think that if 
nuclear war doesn't happen, I think that our grandchildren or whatever can still look back and see at like look at this podcast and be like, oh, that's kind of cool that great 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 grandfather Hayden had a podcast or whatever. You know, you never know. But at the same time, like it's also kind of like egotistical and narcissistic to think that I guess like people would still really care that much to consume all your old content or what you put out. Um, but yeah, I, I mean. Man, I think that that positive nihilism is, is kind of like the way to go where it's like, you know what, like, if it doesn't even matter, might, might as well just grab by the balls and not give a fuck what people think and just get after it. That's the way to look at, at it versus like nothing even matters. Like, why do I, I'm not going to do anything. Like, it doesn't fucking matter if I don't live up to my potential. Because um, I think, I think you do look, I think there is, I don't know, there's something after this. I know there's something after this and I know for a fact that. Um, Ed Milet is one of a big inspiration for me. I saw him speak the other week and he talks about like, you know, he's a big believer that when he, whatever it is, the afterlife, heaven, whatever you believe in, that you're, you're presented with the man you're supposed to be. And that is like, you, you better do, you better do whatever you can to make that as close to a mirror image as possible. Um, or else it's going to feel like hell if you're looking at someone and you know, you can't even recognize them. So I think I had a similar experience with you growing up with religion. My parents um, had me go to CCD, which was like Sunday school for Catholic kids. And I just completely hated every second of it. Like everything that they were telling me, I I would ask questions. I would have questions and their answer would always just be, have faith, have faith, have faith. And I didn't want that. I wanted a concrete answer because I was so curious about this concept of what happens. Like, what's it all for? Like, right. I'm having these deep thoughts at such a young age, and I'm having people tell me to have faith in response, which was, would yeah. just anger me. Um, mm-hmm. So that kind of shut me down from a religion for a while. But recently, I've been doing a little bit more research on Buddhism, actually, which I mm. I really resonate with a lot of the concepts there about acceptance. I think I think that's a huge mm. part of of life. But going back to optimistic nihilism How, are you familiar with the youtube channel kurzik it's the german word for in a, in a nutshell they do like short animation videos i'm not no. okay after this after this it. podcast i'll send you uh one of their videos it's called optimistic nihilism because yeah. that that video changed my life and anybody watching this should go watch that because it's just unbelievable but are you familiar with andrew huberman yeah neuroscientist yep. i was watching a yep. podcast with him and his opinion on meaning and he talks about the scale of space and time and how that influences meaning and how meaning can be dynamic and change depending on the scale of space and time. So if you're driving on the highway, you pull over, you see this little ant hill, and you look at the ants mm-hmm. and you see that their meaning, you're looking at them, their meaning is to protect their queen and build this colony. And if you zoom out cool. a little bit further, say like you're a human, you're in a high school, you're playing for a football team, your meaning is you're willing to put your your health and wellness on the line to win this mm-hmm. football game, right? Like that is your yeah. meaning. You take us, you, you go out, you zoom out a little bit on the scale of space and time. You're a soldier fighting for your country. You're willing to put your life on the line. That's your meaning. But if mm-hmm. you, zo- if you zoom out far enough, then it's like, you know, you're fighting for humanity, climate change. Maybe it's space, space exploration, becoming an interplanetary species. That's your meaning, right? Mm-hmm. But if you zoom out yeah. far enough and you see how big the universe really is, is there any meaning mm-hmm. at all? I don't know. And are humans yeah. able to ever answer that question? I don't know. But that's just, that was a really interesting concept that he had talked about how meaning is dynamic and changes on the scale yeah. of space and time that really resonated with me. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, too, like another thing to think about, right? Like even if, even if, you know, your great whatever uh, descendants don't remember you, like every single action that you do have has, you know, a domino, like it, it leads to something else. Like every decision you know, shuts off another possibility. So, you know, I think that even it, like your actions in this life will impact your descendants no matter what you choose, right? So like, for example, if you think about, you know, my ancestors who immigrated from Ireland over here, that decision was a hell of a, like that made massive change. Like I might not be here. Like there's definitely like meaning in the actions that you do. And even if they don't remember you or they don't like, I don't know, kind of see those things, I think that, you do have some sort of impact on like the trajectory of your descendants or human. I mean, I, I guess humanity as a whole, but yeah, I, I totally, I'm totally with you with the whole zoom out thing. And you know, like it's, it's, uh, you know, you might as well, you might as well, you might as well just put me into it. You might as well just get after it and do something that, you know, influences you and the people that you have around you. Because I mean, if you're dead, like maybe, and, and maybe who knows if as negative as if nothing happens after death, like, 
might as well just use the experience to, you know, help the people around you and have a positive impact on the people you have. And then if that's it, that's it. But so many ways to look at it. You, we mentioned meditation earlier. I know that you're big into mm. the uh, self-improvement space. Do you meditate on a regular yeah. basis? So I did for a while and I actually just, just now got back into it. I meditated for like 25 minutes yesterday and it's because I've been going through uh, kind of some some battle, some mental health battles that I never really thought I'd experience, which is interesting. Um, nothing crazy, but just like kind of getting my head negative thought patterns. And so uh, with me being always on and trying to like work and stuff, taking time to tap out and meditate has been, has been great. I did, I did it consistently through my senior year of college, like almost daily. Um, and yeah, I'm now kind of just getting back into it. Okay, awesome. I, I kind of always find myself going for like two, three, maybe four days, but I'm never able to like stay consistent with it. Do you have yeah. any tips on like, because I'm so, I'm so, I'm such a motivated and driven person. Like I'll, I'll go to the gym every day and have no problem motivating myself. But when it comes to meditation, yeah. I can't really stay consistent with it. Yeah. A um, few things. I mean, like I, I had a, um, I kind of went through a period of like non-negotiables in my day and like I had to, I was like tracking it and checking it off every day. And like I had to do it no matter how, how bad it, or how much I didn't want to do it. And so trying to get like a building up like momentum and like trying to start a streak or something kind of helps of like how long can I go doing it? But even then, you know, um, it's, I have plenty of stuff other than meditation that I try to do for, you know, try to do for every day, but then it drops off, you know, by day five or whatever. Um, I think, I think one few things you could do one getting, getting on some sort of meditation program. So like calm and, uh, there's another one. Some of those apps are pretty good. Um, to like you realizing that like, you're not going to see the real benefits of meditation. Like it takes time to really get up to that point. Um, so that's something to think about is like, okay, like if you really want to become good at meditation, like, you know, you have to get up to a point. And then another thing for me, like, I would, I would meditate at night or I'd meditate, I tried to meditate in the morning and I kept falling asleep. And then when I meditate uh, at night, I would kind of just like push it off, wouldn't be as good. So figuring out what, what time of the day works for you, I think helps. I do like a midday meditation, which was like really good for me because I'm just like alert, let me tap out, let me get back into work. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard because even like if you have, if you have a mind that's like mine too, like it's, you're always thinking about stuff. And I think like you mentioned, you're kind of like motivated, you're kind of driven. Like sometimes it's hard to slow down and, you know, take a deep breath and, and do 10 minutes. Um, but at the same time, like I'm no person that says, you know, wake up at four, you, you don't have to wake up at 4.30 AM. You don't need to meditate. You don't need to do any of that stuff to be successful. Like none of these things lead to success directly. It's more like what are the, what are the self-improvement habits and things that, you know, directly correlate to, you know, you feeling better about yourself and you, um, getting more stuff done in the day. So if you can feel like, like I have my, one of my partners, um, Dylan, who I'm good friends with, he, he like is anti all that stuff. He's like meditation is scam, like all this bullshit, but he's a, very successful as an entrepreneur. He just rolls out of bed and gets to work. That's all he does. And that's kind of like a Hermosi standpoint. He's like, you don't need the morning routine. You don't need to meditate. You don't need to do all this stuff. You just need to take action. Um, but again, like if like my, I, I lean back, I had that mentality for a bit, but I'm leaning back on meditation because of like mental calamity and mental health stuff that I'm like, I need to actually take this time out of my day because it will, it'll positively impact me. So, so, so tell me, are you, so you, are you trying to meditate? Do you like meditation? Are you, have you thrown it out the door? I see, or? I see the importance of it and I can appreciate the benefits that it would have if I was consistent with it. So I think yeah. I just need to make it a part of my daily routine and have it become a habit i uh matt diavella is self-improvement youtuber he has like a good thing it's like if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to have a new habit like it's okay if you miss one day but don't don't miss it twice so like that's kind of a good mentality where it's like you know if you fall off for one day like make sure that you get back on the bandwagon or back on the wagon for the next day because like you'll find that if you're trying to have a habit trying to instill a new habit into your life if you like miss a day, miss another day, miss another day, and then you're like back to square one, it's kind of like keeping that momentum and not beating yourself up if you miss like if you miss it a day, you know, just keep keep moving. Okay, awesome. Which which app do you use? Um, I use I actually use I use this app called Brain FM, which is like a it's actually it's actually a really cheap one. It just has like tones and sounds and stuff like that. 
And then I have like a few go-to YouTube videos that are some solid ones I listened to. Yesterday I did, found this good one for the first time. It was like uh, Bob Proctor, uh, who's like a self-improvement law of attraction guy. I uh, had a meditation on abundance. It was a really good one. And then I have a few others that I just kind of have uh, bookmarked on YouTube. I, I reference. I saw that you were just in Nashville a week ago, and I just missed you because I was there two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I was there two weeks ago celebrating my cousin's <laughs> 21st. You got any crazy stories? It's funny. I went there. No, I went there for it like uh, Arte Syndicate, which was the uh, Andy Frisell and Ed Milet uh, conference. So it was very, very uh, much a business businessy trip and the goal is to get for that for that conference but i mean we went on broadway we went on broadway one night that's that's always a blast like i was i was there a year ago for more of like the party fun scene and that that just that's just like the best nightlife i think out there is running around all the live music and stuff um but no I, it's so funny i literally went to nashville i saw so many people that like i saw like people from my high school i saw these massachusetts people people running up to my girlfriend be like oh st a's like you went to my college and like like i'm like why is everyone from massachusetts here right now like it was hilarious it was just like oh like just seeing random people there oh that's so cool. it was funny yeah broadway's yeah, a crazy yeah. place dude it's a crazy place yeah. i think you and i had very crazy different place. experiences at least a week ago probably <laughs> um yeah why what, what went down with you oh god i think it would be better left unsaid on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> but um what were some of the uh, i don't know that much about andy frisella i know he does the the yeah. 75 hard can you talk about some of the main takeaways after watching him speak yeah um i can i can whip it out right here um i mean so yeah andy frisella is probably number one inspiration i think he he had a podcast mfceo project that was like literally changed my life and he now has a real AF podcast, but the MFCEO was like really much, really like tactical entrepreneurial advice. Um, and he was, Andy Frisella was more, Ed Milet's, I enjoyed Ed Milet's speech a little bit more, but Andy's, Andy's was really talking about like legacy um, and obligation to build that legacy, which is interesting. He, he references um, his grandfather who he never met because he like, uh, he died in World War II or whatever and you know, how that influenced him um, but he talks about like a cultural revolution, right? So, you know, if you, if you look at like mainstream things, um, he thinks that entrepreneurs control the culture and that we need to instill discipline and self-improvement, all these things into the culture. And it starts with business leaders and leaders, you know, out there to start speaking that into, um, the world. So, you know, um, he says, be so good that like you're, that people around you are inspired and they want to get on that wavelength of self-improvement, bettering themselves, maybe pursuing that business, uh, doing the things like that. Because I think that, you know, I mean, I don't want to be too critical of like modern society, but certainly like there's a lot of like, you know, social people are addicted to social media, porn, all those dopamine things that, you know, if the way to shift culture is to start to instill those, you know, positive habits and it starts with, it starts with action. Like it comes back to um, Jordan Peterson kind of says like clean your room before you go out and judge the world. So getting your shit together, improving yourself will have a ripple effect on people and, and how to do that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they had uh, another guy, crazy story. This is actually the smallest speaker there. Like he was kind of a guest speaker. Uh, his name was Damon West, but he was basically, he, he was a D1 college athlete. Then he went on to um, I, 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 yeah, he, D1 college athlete had everything set up for him and then he got hooked on meth and he was down here in the Dallas area and he got hooked on meth so much that like he was robbing, uh, Dallas homes for money just to go buy meth. And so he got life in prison and he has this crazy story about, uh, kind of like these, when you go into prison, he was told that you can be three things. You can be a carrot, you can be an egg, or you can be a coffee bean. And so a carrot, when he's in that high pressure scenario, it'll just shrivel up, get soft. Like it's like if, you, if you're boiling water on a carrot, if you shrivel up, get soft. An egg, it will have that hard shell and it'll act all tough and it's a soft inside, but it'll get hardened um, by being in that in that uh, that area, that, that environment. And then the coffee bean, if it gets heated up, it actually is so hard and so like real that it actually influences the whole environment. So your, your, your positive attitude, whatever it has, influences everyone. And so uh, he kind of, he actually, 
got off. I don't know how, but he got out of jail early, and now he's this big motivational speaker, and he talks about this, and his his speech was sick. But yeah, I mean, if, I don't know if you or anyone listening to this, like, definitely if you have the opportunity to go to these types of events, and I'd say 100 percent do it because you're you're just surrounded by all these like minded individuals that you know, are on that wavelength. So yeah, it was highly recommend uh, going to see Arte if you can, or any any event like that. Awesome. So I'm, I'm assuming he was the, the coffee bean of the three options. Yes. Okay. Yes, he okay. All about, he, his motto is be a coffee bean. Nice. So yeah, the guy was, the guy was full of energy. It's wild. Cool. To see like a guy with a meth, meth addict, life in prison to now being in front of everyone, you know, talking about the stuff. It's insane. Interesting. So. It seems like uh, Frisella and Hormozy have differing opinions when it comes to the, the legacy portion. You know, it's, 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 yeah, it's just what you, it's what you what you make of it. Like what, what what gets you out of bed in the morning if you can have that mentality of like it doesn't there's no legacy, there's no meaning, and Hermosi just like yeah, buddy, like yeah, I do it. He kind of just so so nonchalant about it. Um, versus Andy, he takes a lot of pride in what he's building and he tries to save his legacy. Like, hey, if if none of this matters, at least put some put your own meaning to it and whatever gets you out of bed and get some stuff done. Uh, you know. That's all that matters. What is the number one lesson that you've learned from your experiences as an entrepreneur? Put yourself in the deep end and learn how to swim. I think it's probably the best way of putting it. Is like you, so many people are so fearful and worried and think they are perfectionists, that they have to have everything perfect in order to pursue entrepreneurship or pursue their goals or whatever, that oftentimes they just stay on the sidelines and never get anything done. And if you can just keep continuing to throw yourself into those scenarios even if you feel like you're not uh prepared or not skilled for them you will through experience and through failures and through um you know even negative experiences you're going to learn how to swim and get through that those times so i think that too many people like i i talk to so many people they're like oh you know even my classmates are like yeah i want to do entrepreneurship but i'm going to wait you know i'm going to wait 10 years or whatever wait till i have some money saved up and I think, uh, yeah, that's one way of doing it. But at the same time, like, make sure that you're not so fearful and not so hesitant that you never do it at all. Um, so for me, like, I continue to throw myself into the rooms where I'm the smallest person there and try to just, like, figure it out and, and, and kind of learn how to swim. So, um, yeah, and then just embracing those failures, right? Like, I think that failure, like, I, I experienced my fair share of failures, probably 75% failures or 90% failures, and then that big win kind of makes it all worth it. So continuing to um, continue to experience those failures and also to be able to see progress when it doesn't even feel like you're, you're, you're getting progress, I think is a big thing too, where you're putting in that work, you don't see any maybe financial return or even visible return on what you're doing, being able to understand that just by taking action, you're, you're making that progress. So yeah, that's that's. I've been reflecting on that a lot um, lately, but I think that um, the biggest thing is just you just have to you just have to get out there and, and try, and you just have to, you know, get your get your name out there and put yourself in those situations, or you know, you'll never you'll never uh, get there. Don't fear failure. Embrace it and learn from it. Yeah, exactly. Summed it up right. I know you got a call coming up, so I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on. I had a blast, dude. So anybody watching this, um, Vision Nutrition pre-workout, next time you want to buy pre-workout, vznutrition.com, hit them up. Best pre-workout around.